Hey YouTube, Meep Magnet here. Welcome to episode 23 of our Feed the Beast Continuum. Quick tips and tricks and shit. Um, so last episode, so episode 22, we went over the diesel generator and some of the equipment that is required to run that. So the diesel generator generates um, 1,024 RF per tick. Um, so we've got this set up. This is, this is the exact same as it was um, in the previous episode, except you're going to notice there's something a little bit different here. Um, you're going to see there's a pipe connected to this tank. So what I wanted to do in this episode was go over how to automate um, producing fuel and how to get it into the generator. So let's go downstairs. Let's um, get in here and let's go take a look. So uh, previously we've been manually uh, picking up all this shit, potatoes and hemp. Um, we kind of talked about this on the last episode. Um, but we're going to make some changes now. Um, if you see here, that pipe um, is actually running through the ceiling, down through the mezzanine, and then actually ends up in the front of our handy-dandy refinery here. Um, and you can see right now there is some plant oil in there, um, but there's no ethanol. So let's take a look on how we can automate that. There is a machine here. Um, it's called the, called the Garden Cloche, I think is how that's pronounced. Um, and as you can see here, this machine is growing potatoes manual or automatically. No more manual bullshit. Um, it's just growing fucking potatoes. Um, you'll notice the setup is relatively simple. Um, it just requires some power. Um, looking for some water. And then this is for fertilizer. Now you don't have to use this, but it has a growth modifier. So it's 1.5 times as fast if you take fertilizer um, and dump it in this machine. Fertilizer is pretty easy to make. Um, if you've been running uh, your void uh, miner over there, you're gonna come up with appetite. So appetite and some sand hooks you up with fertilizer. So keep that in mind. You can use that stuff, dump it in here. You can use bone meal as well. Um, this stuff's relatively cheap because you should be picking it up anyway. Let's take a look at our infinite water source here. Um, you're going to notice that there's something a little bit funky with this. Um, there's a fucking kitchen sink on top of these tanks. Um, infinite water source, I like it. <laughs> it works well for what I'm doing right now, um, so I'm just going to run with it. But there's something else that I wanted to go over quickly, and it's going to be these flat transfer nodes. So you can see the description, it says thinner than the thinnest of pancakes, small enough to fit between blocks. So the way this works, I'm going to pull this tank out of here, is I've got this kitchen sink stuck up here. And I've got one of those, um, one of these flat transfer nodes stuck to the bottom of it. Just regular, regular placement. Um, so what it's doing is it's actually pulling from the sink and putting it into the tank. So this is way cheaper. If you look at the flat fluid transfer node, if you make an anvil, yeah, the anvil's a little bit expensive, but it's it's not consumed when you build these things. For one fluid transfer node, you end up with eight of these. So it kind of works out if you're using this with tanks. Um, it's it's relatively cheap. So kind of keep that in mind. You can use these. You can use the hell out of them, um, and they actually work pretty well. Um, I've been using them for the last probably hour, and this is the shit. Um, this is really easy to work with. Um, keeps these tanks full, even though this is kind of janky, but that's okay. It works well. It's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. It's filling up these potatoes, and it is making us some ethanol. So, this setup is relatively simple. Um, you'll notice on the back of the garden cloche here, You've got this little orange port. That's where your items are coming out. So fortunately for potatoes, um, there's only a, one item here. So in the top we put potatoes. In the bottom goes what you're growing it on. So dirt in this instance. I assume that you're able to do um, nether wart in here with um, soul sand and possibly ender lilies. Is that in here or is that a different mod pack? Um, I guess it, it doesn't make a damn bit of difference, I guess. But anyway, your growing material is going in the bottom, 
and then your seed is going in the top. Um, so it does have an internal inventory. You'll see that it's pumped out of there. It's automatic. You don't have to put anything in here. Um, there's no servos involved for this particular setup. So the potatoes in here, um, it's just doing its business. Uh, it's relatively cheap. The garden cloche by itself. Um, you're looking at a vacuum tube, which really isn't that expensive. Um, you get three of them for a couple copper wire, redstone, and some glass. Uh, most expensive part here is probably going to be this um, basic machine frame, or advanced machine frame, excuse me. Um, and the watering can is kind of a pain in the ass. Just a couple invar, but you have to make this empowered void crystal. I think we went over a watering can in a previous episode, um, probably 20 or 21, possibly 22. Um, but just remember, it's just a piece of coal. Um, if the uh, atomic reconstructor turns into a void crystal, and then you set it up this way. So keep that in mind. Um, you do have to kind of pay attention to where the ports are in the bottom. Um, the open ones, we can rip this off here. Let's take a look. This big open one here accepts fluids. It might work the other way. I haven't tested it, but I know for a fact that it works this way. So just go for the big open black spot on here. Sets it up. Keeps the water full. You don't have to worry about it. So that is the industrial fermenter setup with potatoes. It's relatively simple. Just make sure that your orange is hooked into the blue. Um, and these, it'll push right into the machine. You don't have to do shit to this thing. Pretty much just power it. Um, you can see power port there. It does its business. Let it go. Let it rock. Let it do its thing. Um, you don't really have to do anything with it. Um, if you're power conscious right now, which you might be, throw a switch on this bitch, shut it off when you don't need it. Um, and you should be okay. So, um, let's move on to the squeezer setup. So this one's a little bit different. So industrial hemp seeds are kind of a pain in the ass. Not because it's, it's a huge deal, it's because it outputs two items. So industrial hemp seeds, we end up with, um, a little bit of that fiber shit um, and you can see here that this setup is a little bit different so I'm powering out of the top here and you can do that there's a power port on the top of these things too um, water setup is relatively the same so I've got a kitchen sink tank uh, that's dumping into a pipe a fluid pipe pipe especially uh, immersive engineering um, keep that in mind because um, these things function a little bit different and they're significantly cheaper than just running regular transfer pipes. Um, and before we get too much farther, let's take a look at that. So these are made from pipes, refined iron plate, but you're getting four of them at the expense of refined iron. If you got the setup like I do, the water is hooked right into that EFAB setup. You don't have to really worry about this shit. Your biggest concern is going to be collecting the iron to make this. Um, invest in it. It's worth it. Uh, especially if you're generating power um, with biodiesel right now. This is probably the most powerful set of RF generators you can build at the moment. So if you've been following along, um, you can kind of see what the deal is here. So uh, let's take a look at this setup a little bit more. So we've got our orange port here is outputting into this chest. Um, you can see that everything is coming out of here. So this is pretty much just a buffer zone. That's all I'm using this for. Um, but you see that the setup here is using servos and item ducts. So what I've got going, on the blue port here, I've got an output from the chest. I've blacklisted industrial hemp fiber. So if anything else were to go in here, yeah, I'd get pumped in the machine. I don't really give a shit. This is the way I set it up. This is the way I'm going to run it until I have to tear this shit down and reorganize. So blacklisted, um, you can change this to whitelist. Let's look at the other one. So I've whitelisted industrial hemp fiber, and what it's doing is it's going into the chest, it's pumping down, and it's going into this trash can. So this is pretty much going into oblivion. It's just pumping that hemp fiber in there. I don't have anywhere to put this shit right now. Um, I probably shouldn't be voiding it, but that's what I'm doing, and I, I, don't, I don't really care. So if I need it later on, I guess it'll come back and bite me in the ass, which it very well may, but I'm not going to worry about it right now. So... Um, that's kind of the setup here. If we check the, uh, the industrial squeezer, you can see that there's a few stacks of uh, industrial hemp seeds sitting here. Building up some plant oil for sure. You can see that this tank is filling up pretty fast. Um, 
But that's kind of the setup. So I've got some some other stuff going on here. I've taken the time and I've actually piped this shit underneath the floor. Now the plant oil is going to this side and you can see here we've got a blue port. This is a blue fluid port. So what I've done is I'm piping plant oil into the left side. Um, and you'll see that on this other side, this janky setup, and I'm going to do a little demo in a second here, but that other tank is actually piped to like right here. So we're going to connect that as soon as I'm done showing this. Um, but then we'll kind of see what the hell happens here. Let's get this thing off of here. We don't need that for now. Um, but again, the output pipe on here is actually going up into the ceiling, um, up into the tank upstairs. If you notice at the beginning of the episode, that tank was empty. There's nothing in it. Okay. So let's take a look um, at why these immersive engineering pipes are cool. Now, if you notice, let's pull these off here just quickly. And let's go grab our ethanol. And let's put him here. And let's put a pipe on here. So as you can see, 18.1 buckets in there. It's not doing shit. It's not doing anything. And let's swap this back out. Even if we were to put this on the top, still, transfer pipes don't do shit with these things. So 18.1 buckets. So keep that in mind. Um, and the reason I'm recommending that we use pipes from immersive engineering is for this reason. You can see this janky ass set up here, but let's put our ethanol on here. If we could maybe put it on top of the pipe, that would probably work a little bit better. Oh, you son of a bitch. There, how about there, you prick bastard? Okay, let's open this up. See how it's flowing out of there? As you can see here, it's filling this bad boy up. Now, the great thing about this is that you don't have to worry really about anything. It doesn't matter what the shape is on this, even though this has got a big hook. Um, you're pumping down and then back up and around. It, it doesn't matter. The system doesn't give a shit. It doesn't care. Which is why I recommend you hook these bad boy up as is and run this to wherever you're going because you can run it up above you can run it below you can run it wherever the hell you want you're limited by your resources um, and how much you want to spend on it so let's take a look here I got a whole bunch of tanks on me that actually have some um, biodiesel in it but let's um let's fire this bad boy up um, but let's take this apart first So we can get this out of here and we can test the rest of our setup. Put this tank back on here. And there's two buckets in there right now. There should be some more by the time we're actually moving back over there. That'll work perfect. Um, I'm going to go ahead and hook this up. So again, these just go into... Oh, shit. That's okay. I can sit down there for now. That's not going to hurt anything. Um, hooked up into the machine, no problem. I'm going to switch these over to orange. I'm going to switch this over. We're at 2.3 buckets. Switch that over. You can see that's draining out. That's gone. And let's take a look and see what the old refinery has here. Yep, there's our two buckets. It's pumping in there. So our plant oil is full. Ethanol's ready to rock. I'm going to flip this bitch on. 
here we go. It's going to start burning RF like crazy. See, this is pumping out. Internal buffer is starting to drain here. This one doesn't have one because it's a little bit slower. It almost seems like you could use two industrial fermenters to one squeezer and you would still probably be a little short on ethanol. Um, just keep that in mind. Um, that you could possibly use two of these if you're really, really running it out that way. So it seems uh, two to one to one. And that'll just keep going. Let's run up onto the roof and see what we got going. Check and see what our tank is doing up here. Now, typically in the past, I've never run internal buffers or uh, any kind of buffer. Um, I'm just running straight out of the machine, but I found that it works better to use a tank as a buffer. Um, just in case you got to shut shit off, it's easy just to keep building or, you know, accumulating resources, I guess. Use tanks as a buffer. This is a bad tank. Uh, I'm not really a fan of this. Um, but for now, it's it's serving its purpose. Um, but yeah, it looks like it pumped it up from downstairs. I'm going to hook this uh, transfer node back up. And put this guy back together. And you can see that it is going into our diesel generator. So this is the first part of the automation process. Uh, it's not too bad. Um, should work relatively well. And I think you'll be quite happy with the results. Let's fire this bad boy up just for shits. Let's see. Noisy damn thing. And even with all that shit running downstairs, it's still pumping up the RF in this thing. It's doing its business. We could add some supplemental power here, but I don't think we're going to mess with that. I know there's some combustion dynamos, I think. If I could spell calm oxygen. Compression is what it's called. Fluid fuel coolant. We won't worry about that right now. I don't know what it produces. Can't be all that much anyway. But yeah, this thing is just doing its business and pumping it out there. Keep in mind I have that void miter running that's still doing its thing so whatever draws on there um, that's coming out of here too. And ideally what what I should do here is pull this line off here and then add another up here because it's generating more than a thousand RF per tick as you can see the input here is limited to a thousand um, but that's okay. I think this this diesel generator has an internal buffer on it. So, but that's how this works. Um, so I hope this was helpful. Um, we'll do a little more automation further on. Um, but I figured I'd start with our basic power automation and how to make this a little bit um, easier to deal with. So, until next time.